praise the Lord. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, once again Father has come greeting you all in the name of Jesus. We have today the reflections of day 169 of our Bible pilgrimage that we are making together. Uh, today our reflections are uh, on second book of Kings, last two chapters, 24 and 25. Also Psalm number 127 and uh, Ephesians chapter 1, we are beginning a new epistle today, having completed the epistle of St. Paul to Galatians. After Galatians, Ephesians beginning today. Hallelujah. In the last few verses of uh, chapter 23 of second book of Kings, we had seen that Josiah's son Jehoiahaz, who became the 17th king of uh, Judah after the death of, uh, after the murder of uh, uh, Josiah. This son Jehoiahaz was not like father. He was a wicked man, leading the people back into sinfulness, idol worship, wickedness. During that time, the Egyptians forced the king of Judah to pay them tax for protection. So, uh, Judah has come under the kingship or the authority of uh, Egypt now. And the Egyptians, they had such influence that they put in a new king, another son of Josiah, Eliakim, whom they named Jehoiakim. Uh, and what happened to the older one, uh, the Jehoiahaz, he was taken uh, as a captive to Egypt and he dies there. Now, by the beginning of uh, chapter 24, Egypt's power had grown weaker than that of an emerging world power, Babylon. Now, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians attacked Jerusalem and took captive many rich, educated and powerful families uh, in Jerusalem and taking them to Babylon. So that was the first step of the Babylonian uh, captivity. Hallelujah. So in chapter 24, uh, in second book of Kings, we uh, see that it marks the beginning of the end for Judah. Babylonian captivity begins almost. So we find now Jehoiakim, the 18th king, then Jehoiakim, his son, that is the 19th king of Judah, and uh, the 20th king, the last king, that is King Sadakia, the uncle of uh, Jehoiakim. All these last three kings were wicked ones who did evil in the sight of the Lord. So, with the 20th king, the fall was complete, destruction was complete. So, the account of the Babylonian captivity of the Lord's chosen people is documented in the 25th chapter, the last chapter of second book of Kings. Thus we see that both northern and southern kingdoms, Israel and Judah, the, both were captured because Israel's fall we had seen already um, to the Assyrians. So, we saw the Assyrian captivity now. The final blow, Judah also have fallen, that is the Babylonian captivity. So, the Lord's prophets had foretold, all that was foretold is accomplished. Because now we see the most tragic event in the history of God's people is this, Babylonian captivity in 586 BC. For the next 70 years, people of God do not have a nation. They are in the captivity. They are in darkness. They are in suffering. But that suffering is doing something greater, something, you know, good. That they they, they, in the heart of their hearts, they start worshipping the Lord with a lot of zeal. They abandoned the ways of the world 
the worshipping the idol worships that they had because they all started thirsting for righteousness thirsting for uh, the holiness of god thirsting for uh, a return to their own nation their own land that is the the, the land of uh, their forefathers hallelujah so we find here like a last approximately 600 years israel was essentially free people they could worship their god they were free they were worshiping the god of their fathers abraham isaac and jacob but they had they had forsaken their god and were taken captive and scattered among those who did not worship the true and living god so that is the babylonian captivity which uh, really really made a difference in the lives of our forefathers people of god hallelujah so this babylonian captivity is a very very important point uh, uh in the history of israel it has left far reaching consequences the most important of them was now israel knows what it is like forsaking their lord and how sin can make them slaves so even today that is a very clear message that every sin will today or tomorrow make us slaves it will deprive us of our true freedom that we have in christ hallelujah now we come to psalm number 127 it begins like this unless the lord builds the house those who build it labor in vain unless the lord watches over the city the watchman stay stays awake in vain it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest so the main principle of this psalm is that all human efforts are going to be in vain unless they have god's blessings so this principle is applied to four areas uh, of life first construction of a house building the house second protection of a city you know guarding the city third uh, earning a living by putting lot of hard work working for long hours for having children hallelujah into this four areas this main principle is applied that is blessing of the lord is essential the other is said to be solomon so the major message of god being the central to and uh, sovereign in life sounds much like portions of uh, solomon's ecclesiastes uh, verse 3 the children are a heritage from the lord the fruit of the womb is a reward from the lord hallelujah parents every parent should have this positive perspective you should remember the most important message that children are from the lord hallelujah so words forces like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the a uh, son of one's youth happy is the man who has his quiver full of them so as arrows are indispensable for a warrior to succeed in the battle so children are invaluable as defenders of their father and mother in time of war meaning in time of spiritual battle spiritual attack hallelujah the more such defenders are the better hallelujah see the image of arrow an arrow goes to a place the archer cannot go to hallelujah and also the arrow accomplishes a purpose the the archer uh, cannot accomplish so he is here and the arrow goes further ahead and accomplishes some greater purpose the same way with god's help christian 
parents should raise their children in such a way that they become arus sent out arus sent out to do good for the lord so they will do greater things so when you claim this word of god children will do greater things than parents praise the lord but it depends on the parent you know the the one who sends the arrow the archer we call hallelujah so it's up to you how you send your child for a greater purpose so your spiritual credibility matters praise the lord that is psalm number 127 we come to st paul's letter to ephesians the first chapter today st paul had ministered to ephesians uh, during his second and third missionary journeys at least 3 years he spent with them and now he is writing this letter most probably during his first roman imprisonment sometime in ad 60 or 61 because at least three four places we have indications in this letter that he is a prisoner like chapter 3 verse 1 i paul a prisoner for christ jesus on behalf of you gentiles so he is writing this from prison so making this a letter to ephesians Uh, as one of the epistles one among the four epistles which are commonly called prison epistles so this one the first is letter to ephesians then second is to philippians third colossians and fourth to philemon so these four letters are called uh, prison epistles and this letter deals with the topics at the very core of what it uh, you know means to be a christian both in faith and in practice so he is not uh, dealing with only one particular problem affecting the community like we have seen in galatians no here generally he is dealing with uh, christian life this epistle can be divided into two segments very clear it is altogether we have six chapters so first to three chapters forming the first segment wherein he is discussing god's creation of a holy community by his gift of grace in the death and resurrection of jesus christ and he says the members of this community have been chosen by god through the work of jesus christ adopted as children of god and brought near to the father by faith in jesus his son and here there is no difference between gentiles and jews because in jesus the second chapter gives beautiful description of jesus the peacemaker we all jews and gentiles he says were dead in the transgressions and sins but because of the person and work of jesus christ we have been made alive hallelujah so he is giving a profound theological basis as what we are our position in christ that's the first three chapters our position in christ now after laying out this theological truth in the first three chapters he is making his purpose clear he is expecting this community of faith Uh, to walk in accordance with its heavenly calling that is why chapter 4 begins like this i therefore a prisoner for the lord beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called hallelujah so that is the practical aspect now so he says our christian walk is to be characterized by unity holiness meekness love wisdom and perseverance in spiritual warfare that is sixth chapter so in short the first half depicts our position in christ second half 
uh, you know the second segment uh, it describes the our practice on earth hallelujah so first half what is our position theological explanation is given about our position second thing so how we should practice how we should live there's a beautiful a letter to Ephesians very officially and to, um, what is that uh, very practically explaining our faith and so in chapter 1 verse 4 is beautiful he chose us in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world father chose us when before the foundation of the world how in Jesus Christ he has chosen us before the foundation of the world in Christ Jesus for what that we should be holy and blameless before him hallelujah so father chose us when before the foundation of the world how in Jesus for what for living a holy life so that is why he is very clearly revealing you know we are chosen before the foundation of the world world and things in the world were created for our sake later but we are there we were there before the foundation of the world for what for holiness so world and things of the world world and anything in the world should not become a block in our call for holiness hallelujah we should not make compromise with our holiness for anything in the world because world and things of the world came right holiness is greater than anything in the world praise the lord so that is uh, mainly the first chapter here may almighty god bless you all father son and the holy spirit amen mm-hmm.